Hello, my name is Christian Kossel and in this video I will present you the results of my short-term scientific mission within the Cost Action Active and Intelligent Packaging. The collaboration took place between my home institution, the Papier Technische Stiftung located in Munich, Germany, and the hosting institution had been the Iata Sisic Institute located in Valencia in Spain. The duration, the total duration of the STSM was up to 12 days. Let's start with the introduction. The goal of this short-term scientific mission had been the investigation of different materials and as well as process conditions for producing cellulosic nanofibers by using electrohydrodynamic processing technique where I was focusing on the electrospinning technique. You do have several advantages of electrospun fibers, for example, they have a really high surface area per unit mass, as well as a high aspect ratio. In addition, these materials are really lightweight with a tunable pore size. And last but not least, they have a really high sensitivity to changes in the surrounding atmosphere. So, just some words about the electrospinning technique itself. By applying an electrical potential between 10 and 50 kV, the pen and drop of your solution at the end of your needle becomes highly electrified, resulting in a deformation of the liquid drop, also known as Taylor cone. If the voltage reaches a critical value, the electrostatic repulsion forces prevail over the solution surface, which results that the jet is going to be ejected and goes in the right direction of the collector. Now back to the work plan. So we used two different types of PVOH, meaning PVOH 18 and PVOH 28. The concentration of the PVH had been kept constant at 12 weight per weight percent. During the preparation, the viscosity, the surface tension and the conductivity were measured. Afterwards, nanocrystals of cellulose were added with an amount of 1 weight to weight percent. As an additional hydrophobic layer, PHP was coated on the top. The concentration of PHP in the solution was 10 weight to weight percent. So all in all, within these 12 days, we were able to spun about 24 different samples. So here we can see the work plan in a visualized uh, format. So we started with creating nanofibers out of PBOH solutions only to adjust the parameters of the electrospinning uh, technique. After this adjustment had been done, we slightly increased the influences, meaning we added uh, the cellulosic uh, nanocrystals and started with the post-thermal treatment, which can be seen over here. So that at the end of our materials collections, we were able to spun uh, nanofibers, including uh, cellulosic nanocrystals directly on paper having the post-thermal treatment of the PBOH uh, films plus adding the second layer of PHP as an hydrophobic layer which also was, was, had been processed by a post-thermal treatment. Here we can see some impressions of the sample preparation. In the first picture we can see the preparation of the second hydrophobic layer, the PHP. Solutions. Uh, the next two pictures show the homogenization of our polymers via ultrasonic treatment and the last picture shows the characterizations of the polymers meaning the measurement of uh, the viscosity. I already mentioned that the adjustment of the parameters of the electrospinning technique itself is highly important which resulted in the following parameters which we figured out for optimal processing. So the flow rate of the polymer solution had been kept constant at 0.5 milliliters per hour. The voltage was adjusted to 18 kV and the distance between the needle and the collector had been set up to 150 millimeters. 
As a result of the adjustment of these parameters, we were able to generate homogeneous electrospun POH nanofibers, which can be seen in this picture over here. Another important aspect is the adjustment of the parameters of the post thermal process technique itself to improve fiber cohesion, which should result in several advantages meaning, for example, the improvement of membrane compactness or the improvement of mechanical and barrier properties. In the following picture, we can see the influence of the time of the post-thermal treatment process, resulting in the change of the transparency of the nanofiber films, as well as a change of the crystallinity, which will be measured via DSC. SEM analysis has been done as well to identify the structure and the morphology of the electrospun POH fibers with a magnification between uh, 2000 and uh, 30,000, resulting in a nanofiber diameter between 145 up to 190 nanometer. The second part of the SEM characterization focused on the analysis of the influence of the post-thermal treatment process on the POH fibers itself. In the pictures we can see that the porosity of the nanofiber films is highly dependent on the annealing time. So, after the parameters of our PBOH solutions for the electrospinning process had been set, we were able to include one weight to weight percent of CNCs to our solution, and afterwards we were able to spun these polymer solutions directly on uncoated paper. The paper I'm speaking of has a grammage of 120 gram per square meter and had an A4 shape. The results can be seen over here in this picture. After the first layer of cellulosic nanofibers had been coated on paper, an additional second hydrophobic layer consisting out of PHP had been added to the same material samples. Now I'm coming to the characterizations of our material samples. Within PTS, we are measuring several paper-based characterizations. I'm starting with the grease resistance according to KIT. Another important point is the determination of the water absorptiveness according to COP, as well as the measurement of the surface tension, the polarity of the surfaces and the contact angle. Furthermore, we measure the foldability and scoring characteristics as well as the roughness permeability meter according to Benson. At the Yata Sisik Institute located in uh, Valencia, there is some characterizational work still ongoing meaning uh, further and detailed analysis of the SEM results to identify the fiber diameter and the morphology. The same thing is going on with the TEM set. I already mentioned the measurement of the DSC to identify the thermal properties or the change of the crystallization of our material samples as well as the measurement of several bar barrier properties, meaning the water vapor transfer rate, the oxygen transfer rate and the aroma barrier. With the full characterization which had been made from PTS in collaboration with the CSIG Institute, the results will lead to two scientific papers which are right now in progress and will and will be published in the beginning of 2017. Now let's make a little summary. So what we figured out is that to achieve good results, on the one hand the machine parameters, as on the other hand the material parameters, had to be optimized. We saw that the results suggest that by using nanocellulose as a filler in combination with polyvinyl alcohol, we see a great potential to produce fully bio-based paper 
with an potentially enhanced properties. From my personal view, during my stay at the Yatta Sisik Institute in Valencia, I really liked working over there. It was a very productive and very open-minded atmosphere. For further collaborations in the future, both institutes see great potential and therefore we are going to collaborate within a long-term collaboration. So this is the end of my short presentation about the results we achieved uh, within my short-term scientific mission. If you do have any questions, you can find my contact details over there. And last but not least, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Bye-bye.